I was seven years old and we were in, in Bavaria and in front of the Grand Hotel. And I told my parents, I said, I'd like to own this hotel one day. And I delivered newspapers when I was a child. And then when I was old enough to wash dishes, I washed dishes in restaurants. Because in Europe, if you're a server, that's your profession. Uh, if you're a cook, that's your profession. And the executive steward is, I, I would say, one of the hardest positions in operations in the hospitality industry. Uh, to this day, I will still say that was the hardest job I've, I've uh, ever had in the hospitality industry. Really, to become a general manager in the hospitality industry, you need to understand all disciplines. Sales is what feeds the engine of the hospitality industry. You need to fill rooms, you need to fill banquet rooms with catering events and weddings and such. For anybody that's looking to get into the business, there's not a recipe that what's right for me. It's, it's really the timing, uh, the fit for you in location, size of property, job opportunity. Wedding business for us is, is uh, very attractive. Uh, one is because it's our facility. If you look at the backdrop of the property, it's absolutely beautiful. Who wouldn't want to get married here? I think if you're looking for a wedding venue, you shouldn't discount any venue. I mean, if it's a golf course, country club environment, if it's a boutique hotel, if it's a resort, a destination resort, a hotel that could be downtown, city center, or even a conference center like ours. Prospective client, and especially one that has a, a wedding coordinator uh, with them, uh, the most important contact person at any property is the person that's going to put the details together for them. In our case here, it's the catering manager. If you're not getting a call back within 24 hours, well then you need to start thinking, well how are they going to handle my event? And then when you, when you meet with that catering executive, do you connect with that person? Because that person is very important for the success uh, of the outcome of a social event, or in this case a wedding, because they're the ones that are going to communicate everything to the operations staff, so they have to be very organized and, and willing to listen to you and have good listening uh, skills. You know, we feel in this business you could hire somebody that has a great attitude, that's outgoing, uh, that really likes to be in a social environment, um, and then we could train them on what they need to do. I think for a lot of you watching, uh, catering and, and wedding planning seems very glamorous, and, and it really is. I mean, you're dealing with beautiful events, you're dealing with wonderful emotions and things that you can remember for the rest of your life and making a difference in somebody's lifetime is, is pretty special. But I can tell you it's also very hard work because you're getting a lot of information uh, fed to you and some of that information is emotional information so you have to be able to understand. But the wedding coordinator that you would hire, they plan all the other events that, that are happening. We do a handoff at um, before the ceremony or before the reception to our operations team and that's where you really need to know who the banquet manager is. But if you have a professional wedding planner, they're the liaison between you, the catering manager and the operations person. It could say 7.30, but if you're still outside um, taking photos, you know, we're not, we can't do first dance and we can't do a first toast. We need to know from you when you want to do it. So it's, it's important to, to have that uh, wedding coordinator if on your wedding day you don't want to be that involved with deciding when the past hors d'oeuvres are going to be passed. You have to have one point of contact and when you have one point of contact, the functions are going to go fine. It's more favorable now to have a, a one package for a wedding that includes uh, A to Z. And if you're flexible in the day or date uh, and you can work with the venue, you're going to find yourself saving 30 to 40 percent. You know, after the initial site inspection, uh, we really identify the business at hand and we put it in really in three different buckets. A day or two passes, it's our responsibility um, to get back to you to find out if you still want to choose our venue because we either hold space for you or we don't. If the window's short, and I don't think there's too many people that want to get married within a one, two, or three month period, there's some outstanding discounts because if I have space next week, I'll give it to you for a great discount because there's a good chance I'm not going to fill it up. Now there is rentals for different areas around the property, so there is more of a cost, but it really is minimal. And uh, to have a more memorable occasion for yourselves and also uh, for your guests, it really is nice to have a few different venues that you're at. Primarily, if you think about it, it's, it's a five or six hour event. I mean, it's a long afternoon, it's a long evening, and to be in one room the entire time is, is uh, I think people get a little stir crazy. So I'd recommend really utilizing uh, the venue. I would uh, highly recommend that you find out what's happening the day of your wedding and how the staff of the venue controls others because in the contract, you should always have backup space and it should be the right size for your venue and you should know what that space is, but make sure to check on that.
because you don't want to come to your wedding day and find out that there's another wedding or another piece of business in that space that was supposed to be yours and you're stuck out in the rain. When you have a wedding planner, uh, it's very important that that person stays in contact with the catering executive and again it's not unusual for that catering executive to turn over within a year or a year and a half um, but it's also the wedding coordinator's responsibility to keep and get the new catering executive up to speed but if you tell the bride and groom hey when you come in on Friday you're gonna see 200 people on the lawn that you're gonna get married on the next day um, but just so you know they're leaving on Friday night we have our maintenance staff out there. They're gonna they're gonna uh, recut the grass. We're gonna uh, make everything beautiful again. So when you wake up the next morning, it's gonna be beautiful.